This is my uh, John Deere L120 lawn tractor. Had it for at least 12 years, maybe 14, I don't know. Doesn't have a lot of hours on it. But the other day when I was using it to clean up leaves, all of a sudden it wouldn't move forward or backward. Engine runs fine, but there's something wrong with the drivetrain. I imagine it has something to do with the belt, but I really don't know. I do know enough that the belt runs from somewhere underneath the bottom of the engine, you know, underneath the frame back to the hydrostatic transmission back here somewhere. Uh, you know, I can't, can't really see it well. What I've decided to do uh, is to actually try to disassemble enough that I can, I can try to lift this up and remove it. That would help me fix a vent. A bent uh, deck lift I have over here as well while I'm under there and you know I don't really know what the problem is I don't know if this is the best way to approach it I'm not a professional I'm just a guy trying to solve a problem so I'm going to document how I disassemble it enough to try and identify the problem and maybe that information will be useful to somebody else so step one removing the seat would be to take this connection off right here Pull that out and it should come right off. So now that I have this this uh, connection off of there, I'm going to pull off the seat, which is uh, 13 millimeter bolts. Start there because this is screwed through to the the, the frame underneath, and that's why we're going to get this loose. So the next step is to remove the bolts that hold these springs in place. It's 10 millimeter. And let's get your extension ratchet in there and go to town. Removing the steering wheel, it's just a matter of prying this off with a screwdriver. Once you do that, you know, get the appropriate socket wrench, just pull this nut off, and then the wheel will just pull off. It is on a spline shaft, but you know, it's not a big deal. I have the steering wheel off now, and now there are six Allen head screws along the side here that need to be taken out. So find the right one, get busy. You do not need to remove this one and the one on the other side. Those hold in the battery tray. It's just these two and then the two on the other side. So what I found under this cowl is there are actually four electrical connections that need to be disconnected. You've got the ignition switch, the uh, mower deck engage or the PTO engage, and then this is, what is this thing? Looks like it's the hour meter. So they're all unique, pretty hard to mess them up, but they all just pop off. And then uh, I'll show you the, the re reverse lockout switch as well. So really it comes down to four, four connections that need to be taken off. So this reverse safety switch it just has these two, these two clips on it. I suspect there's no difference between the two sides. It's probably just a, you know, a disconnect. So you know, I just pulled them off and I'm just gonna, on, dis, on reassembly, I'm just, you know, gonna put them back like that. And this just clips right down in there like that. And it's all set. So, once you have made all the disconnects underneath the panel here, you know, the only thing that, you know, I have left is just these, these cables for the the throttle and the choke, and I'm, you know, I was able to leave those on. You basically just have to lift this up off of the steering column, okay? And it takes a little bit of doing because it is snug, but it will come off. And then just, I just set it up inside the hood there to get it out of the way. Now that I have that cowl off, you can see I've got these connectors out of the way. I'm going to take the bat, finish taking the battery out. So you get more access to see what's going on underneath. And uh, there's a lot of crap under there. I'm trying to get cleaned out while I'm in there. 
Now, in order to actually get the deck to move, I realized I had to remove, at least get this cowl loosened up. So, you know, I've removed the battery uh, to get access. And what I found is that after some digging around and cleaning things out, what I found is that there are six, you see one down here. So there's actually six of them. If you go around the frame, you'll find six of them down there that need to be removed. They're 10 millimeter bolts. So with that cow loosened up now, you know, I'm able to lift this up enough to get clearance underneath to do what I want. I can't get it actually out of there because it looks like there's more linkage and stuff underneath that I would need to remove. But this gives me enough access to do what I need to do. I'm just going to use a block here to prop this up underneath to give me access underneath to do what I want. The other problem that I decided to fix was to replace this handle. Now that shows it with the new one in place. If I kind of hold up the old one, what had happened was I had an argument with a fence, a neighbor's fence, caught this thing when I was mowing and just bent the heck out of it. It's amazing how much it bent it. You can see what the angle is there just by comparison. So in order to replace that, what you have to do is pull it off of here. Now, there's two things. You got you got the spring clip, which actually if you just use a screwdriver, it's pretty easy to get that off. And then you have this, this uh, interesting washer. I don't know exactly what this is called, but it, it's on there really hard. I had a very difficult time getting it off. Took some serious uh, um, prying, and actually I ended up uh, breaking it so I'm gonna you know put something else on there to, to make sure that doesn't slip out not that I think it really will so uh, you know that's all it really took to replace that so I finally got to the source of my problem what I found was that my drive belt you can see the drive belt right here the drive belt came off the pulley at the top of the transmission pretty simple but you know, the drive belt was actually wedged across the top of the pulley. Obviously, nothing was driving the transmission. Uh, the fix is simply to remove this, this bolt right here, which lets you get this bracket out of the way. Then you can just, you know, put the, put the belt back on the pulley, put this back on. You know, I did test to make sure I had good tension on the, the pulley once I released the parking brake, which... Uh, is how that tension occurs and uh, you know I'm pretty confident that was the the root cause of the problem so here's a little trick for taking the pressure off that drive belt you know once you have this torn apart you can't lock the parking brake any longer because everything is disassembled over here so what I did is simply use the rope around this brake pedal pull the brake pedal forward all the way, you know, and lock that, lock that rope in like that. So now you've got the tension is actually off of the drive belt. Now you can manipulate it and uh, take care of it from there. So simple trick. So after I got it all back together, I was still having a problem. And after several attempts, what I found out is that, you know, when the original problem occurred, it was caused by a stick getting up in here. And what was happening is these, see these little plastic fan blades on this pulley on top of the hydrostatic transmission? A lot of these were kind of boogered up and bent and, and uh, frazzled and they were interfering with the belt and throwing the belt off the pulley again. So what I did is I got my aviation snips out and I just cleaned them up and got rid of anything that was interfering with the belt. So now it's uh, working again. So, there you go. It's the end of the tail, end of the the tail, so to speak.